All right, this will be uh, the first quiz for the upper extremity. Um, so same as the other ones, once I'm done asking the questions, you can pause the video, look over your answers, and then when you're ready, unpause and we'll go over all the correct answers together. All right, let's start. Number one. Uh, so we're gonna come out here like this. Let's just take this muscle out of the way. All right, we wanna identify this muscle here specifically this muscle here specifically this part that's number one this muscle this part that's one number two we're going to take the arm bring it up like this and let's bring this around here for number two we want to identify this muscle here specifically that part this muscle this part that's two number three all right so we're going to be here and this stuff oh yeah i think we'll kind of hold that out of the way like that all right, so I'm gonna loosen the wrist here. We're gonna take these muscles and just move them over a little like that. And right here, so let's create a little space there, a little bit here, there, there. All right, so in this area, we have one, two, three, four muscles. Out of those, I want you to identify the third one, this one right here, which we follow that out is gonna end out here. So that third muscle ends here. Number four. Let's come back over here. Let's do this out there. Right, let's bring this back out. All right, so number four, we're gonna take this muscle here and we're just gonna move it over like that and I want you to identify this muscle that we uncover right here. That's number four. Number five, come down here now, and I want you to identify this muscle here, this muscle here, which originates here, and it comes down and it ends right there. Identify that muscle. That was number five. Number six. Back here, we want to identify this muscle. This one right here, which originates over here. And if we file it down, it's going to end here. All right, identify that muscle there. That was number six. Number seven, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna loosen the wrist and we're gonna move these muscles out of the way and we're gonna go way down here, actually, sorry, wrong way. Let's move these muscles out of the way like that. We're gonna spread all of the muscles apart here and we wanna identify this flat muscle that I'm outlining right there. That one. That was number seven. Number eight. So come up here. Here, and we're going to move this stuff out of the way a little bit like that. And I want you to identify this muscle that we can see right here, which originates over here and follow it down to ends right there. This muscle here, that one. That was number eight. Number nine, so we're gonna bring the arm up and over like that again. Let me move over here. Right, so number nine, 
into here. I'm just going to move these vessels out of the way like this. And right here, we have two muscles here. One that sits on top of the other one there. And out of those two, I want you to take this one, move it out of the way, identify that muscle there. Originates here, follow it down, and it's gonna end over here. This muscle here. That was number nine. Number 10 is we're going to bring this back over like this. Let's put this muscle back here. And number 10 is to identify this muscle here. Now that has three different parts. You have one, two, three things there. I want you to identify the second part of this muscle right here. So again, you got one, two, three parts, second part right here of that muscle. Number 11, let's bring this back up like that. Over here. Again, we're gonna loosen the wrist and move these vessels out of the way here. That, we're gonna take that muscle, move it over. And again, here we're uncovering one, two, three, four muscles of those I want you to identify the first one that we can see right here. So that first muscle, and that one comes over and it ends right here, going out towards here. It's gonna stop right there. So that first muscle, the first of those four, right here, ends right there. Uh, number 12. Is let's bring this back here. And number 12, I want you to identify, actually, I'm gonna go over here, like this. I want you to identify this muscle has three parts. And just grab, boom. All right, so hold that up like that. There we go. We've got this muscle, it's got, it's got one, two, three parts, I want you to identify the second part of this muscle, part going in this direction, here. That was number 12. All right, number 13. I want you to tell me what is the functional relationship between your answer for number one and your answer for number two. What's the functional relationship between your answer for number one and your answer for number two. For number 14, for number uh, 14, if your answer for number six and your answer for number nine contract at the same time, what two movements neutralize? If six and nine contract at the same time, what two movements neutralize? That's for 14. Number 15, let's come back over here and kind of move the arm up like that. What bony feature can we palpate right here? You can see I can move that feature a little bit like that, right? Identify this bony feature right there. That's 15. 16. Here. Here. So I'm just going to put arm back here. I want you to tell me what bony feature can I palpate right here? Okay. You can see with the hand what side of the wrist we're on here. What bony feature can I palpate right there? That is 16. Number 17. I want to know why does your answer for number one, 
which was up here, why does the answer for number one only flex the forearm when the hand is in a supinated position? So tell me why that happens. Why does number one only flex the forearm when the hand is in a supinated position? And last one, number 18. For number 18, I want you to name one movement that your answer for number two can perform that the rest of number two, the other parts of it, uh, cannot perform. So I want you to name one movement that is specific to that particular part of number two that we identified here. One movement that that can do that the rest, the other parts of number two cannot perform. That was 18. All right, that's all the questions. So pause if you need more time. And then when you're ready, unpause, and we'll go over the correct answers together. All right, so number one was here. It was identify this muscle, that part, and that is gonna be biceps, brachii, long head. That's number one. Number two is here, this way. And it was to identify this part, and that was triceps, brachii, long head. Number three was over here. And that was we loosened the wrist. We moved these muscles out of the way. We uncovered, let me get these vessels out of here. We uncovered four muscles, one, two, three, four. We wanted the third one, which came out here. And that's gonna be extensor pollicis longus. Number four was here, here, here. Here we took biceps brachii, moved it out of the way, and we wanted this muscle that we uncovered right here, and that's gonna be brachialis. Number five, moving down the forearm, we grabbed, get it, this muscle right here, and that was gonna be brachioradialis. Number six, was to identify this muscle here, and that was flexor carpi radialis. Number seven was down here, so we kind of loosened the wrist. We moved these muscles out of the way, kind of spread everything apart, and we wanted this deep muscle that we could identify down here, and that one is gonna be pronator quadratus. Number eight was back up here. We kind of moved these muscles out of the way a little bit, identified this muscle here, and that's pronator teres. Number nine was up over here. Kind of moved the form up that way. These vessels off here. It was, we had two muscles next to each other here, one that kind of sits on top of the other, and it was that deeper one, which is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Number 10 was here. Actually, we can leave it in this position, see it a little bit better. We had this muscle here, wanted specifically to know what the second part of that is. If we had one, two, three parts, that was the middle head of deltoid. Number 11 was back up over here. Again, kind of loosen this, move those muscles out of the way, expose those four muscles. Out of those, we wanted the first one, which goes out towards the thumb, but ends right here. And that's gonna be abductor pollicis longus. That'll be that first one right there, which ends right there. Abductor pollicis longus. Number 12, that 
back down. And we had this muscle here. So we want to identify this muscle, which is pectoralis major, specifically the second part of it here. So we kind of had one, two, three parts. Second part is sternal head of the pectoralis major. Number 13, what's the functional relationship between number one and number two? And that's going to be between biceps brachii long head and triceps brachii long head. And that would be antagonistic. Number 14, if your answer for number six and your answer for number nine contract at the same time, what two movements neutralize? Uh, number six was flexor carpi radialis. Number nine was extensor carpi radialis brevis. And then the movements that would neutralize there would be flexion of the hand at the wrist and extension of the hand at the wrist. Uh, number 15 was here, and that was to identify what bony feature can we palpate right there, and that's going to be the olecranon process of the ulna here. Number 16 was what bony process can we palpate here, and here notice that we're towards the thumb side of the hand. And that bony process there is going to be the styloid process of the radius. There. Number 17 was why does your answer for number one, which was long head of biceps brachii. Now, it wouldn't have mattered if we had talked about the long head or the short head. Wouldn't have made a difference. Any part of biceps here. We want to know why does that muscle only flex the forearm when we're in uh, a supinated position. And the answer there is because biceps, and we can see the tendon for it right here, the biceps tendon that I have here, that goes down and it attaches to the radial tuberosity of the radius. And the radius is affected by hand position. So you can see if I kind of hold biceps here and I pronate and supinate the forearm, you can see that that biceps tendon is getting affected by the bone positions here, which means it attaches to the radius. So that's why the forearm needs to be in a supinated position for biceps to be affected. And then number 18 was looking at your answer for number two, which was long head of triceps brachii. You want to know one movement that only the long head per can perform, that the other two parts of triceps, the lateral head and then the medial head, which is over here, cannot perform. And that would be extension or hyperextension of the arm at the shoulder. That is a movement that only the long head of triceps can perform. And that's it.